Hi, and welcome to my channel. This is the fifth episode of my Yellowstone vlog, which covers the Oxbow Bend in Moran, Wyoming, and the drive into the Yellowstone National Park from the south entry. The name Oxbow Bend reminds me of a lake in Canada's Banff National Park. An Oxbow is a crescent-shaped or U-shaped section of river lying alongside a flowing, winding river, so the name is not just specific to this location. As a slow-moving body of water, it is home to lots of water birds and water insects and other small animals. The Mount Moran looks majestic with its reflection on the surface of the calm water. Talking about insects, I found the best way to avoid bug bites is to wear loose, long sleeves and long pants. I saw a lot of women with like skin-tight leggings that, while they might be comfortable, the wild mosquitoes found in the field can easily go through that fabric. Continuing driving about 20 minutes south along the Highway 191, you'll arrive at Snake River Outlook in Moose. This is the spot where Ansel Adams took his famous picture in 1942, exactly 80 years ago. Another 10 minutes south is Schwabacher's Landing, where otters are most active along the shallow water to build their dams. The best time to view animal activity is dawn or dusk, when they come to drink the fresh water in this flat area. During the day, the big animals hide themselves under the shades of trees, but you can still hear birds and insects singing as they signal to each other. Here in the parking lot, we saw this cute minivan from British Columbia in Canada. Love the cheerful spray paint, making it stand out among all the rugged muscle trucks and SUVs we saw all day long along the road.
When I entered Yellowstone's south entrance, I didn't realize that this year, 2022, happens to be the 150th anniversary of Yellowstone National Park. Yes, 150 years ago, that was the spring of 1872, the Yellowstone National Park Protection Act was signed into law, and so the Yellowstone National Park was born. We drove north on US Highway 191. Most of the route is in parallel to the Snake River. The speed limit inside the park is 45 miles per hour and less posted slower. But if you don't feel comfortable driving a big car along a narrow road at this speed, it's better to use the pullouts frequently than pushing yourself to get used to the speed. In general, the roads of the south loop are easier to drive than the winding roads of the northern or upper loop. So I recommend visiting the south loop first and get used to the traffic conditions before visiting the north. Here you can get a view of the Snake River a few hundred feet down in the river valley. You can see that pine trees grow right on the dark and bare rock cliff. The cliff is hundreds of feet of drop from the top, so be very careful when you use the pullouts on the roadside. You can see some of the rails are very rusty and some sections are missing. If you back off the cliff, the young and brittle pine saplings won't be able to stop your car. This is a typical riverside pullout where you can try to fish for the famous Snake River fine spotted cutthroat trout. Small cutthroat trout feed on aquatic insects, but those over 12 inches feed mainly on other smaller fish, and occasionally they would eat small animals. A rule of thumb is that one-year-old cutthroat trouts can grow to four inches and a three-year-old can reach around a foot in length. They are one of the easiest trout to catch on hook and line. However, since the cutthroat trout is one of the native fish, it must be released unharmed. The flood of summer 2022 mostly caused damage on the northern side of the park, so the construction we saw along the way are mostly normal maintenance. That said, I read that the deferred maintenance of the Yellowstone Park amounts to $700 million and could go higher considering the inflation rate of this year.